Which factions in Warhammer 40k are most deserving of a range update or overhaul? Let's talk about the armies that most need a major release in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking model releases and taking a look at the fan desire for certain factions to get updated, which ones are the Warhammer 40k community at large most seeing as deserving of a release, and which ones have had their fill for a while now and Games Workshop could deprioritise right now. For Warhammer 40k model releases, Games Workshop over the last couple of editions seems to have been trying to get new miniatures for each faction in the game, and generally releasing at the same time as their codex releases, usually a nice feels good factor around their launch for each new edition. They get their new rules, they likely get a new model, either an updated one or a new character or something, plus any supporting things like combat patrols. The vast majority of miniatures for factions do tend to drop alongside their codex, though occasionally they do do some more out there releases, a few things tying in with their narrative campaigns or promoting other box releases and things. For the mainstay codex releases though, Games Workshop tends to go either one of two ways. If your faction is just being shown a token effort this time round, it's likely just to be a single individual character release, maybe two or three if you're lucky. We've seen that so far in 10th edition with quite a few factions. Admet got their Sidonian Scatros, Custodes and Orcs got a single character, Necrons and Chaos getting a little bit luckier, the Necrons getting three characters, Chaos getting two. We've had it in 9th edition as well, say for example the Grey Knights and the Thousand Sons facing off in that Hexfire box set with Castell and Crow and the Infernal Master. The alternative to that is your faction getting a bigger release. Games Workshop often tending to go kind of all or nothing with these, most commonly just getting one character, or just generally getting really quite a big range of new kits launching all at once, say with what we've had with the crew recently, or waves of releases for the Dark Angels with their Deathwing Knights and Inner Circle Companions and things, or the big Space Marine and Tyranid ranges launching at the start of 10th. I'm sure Games Workshop will keep the never-ending praise of named and support characters coming, but I thought it was these ones that we could focus on for this video, which factions most need a big release, multiple kits dropping at once to try and keep up with their peers. For this one I thought it might be interesting to get the opinions of the community at large, I asked you guys which armies most need a big release in 10th edition and why, and I thought I'd talk through a few of the most deserving a major wave of new kits, broadly focusing on the ones that polled out of the top 10 on this one, but I thought we could first stop off for a quick look at the ones at the other end of the scale. I'm not going to cover literally every faction in this video, anything else not mentioned is somewhere in the middle. First up, before getting into the factions most wanting, I thought we'd take a look at the ones that the community at large seems to think don't need a huge release right now. Most of these features tending to be ones that have had at least a fairly good release in recent history. With that in mind, it kind of stands to reason that Dark Angels were voted the single lowest here. They literally just got their Deathwing Knights and the Inner Circle Companions and a couple of character releases. It does feel like kind of half the Primaris Dark Angels range they'll be coming along with. I have a feeling that next edition we'll be getting Ezekiel and some Ravenwing to follow them up. Otherwise, for things that polled notably below the rest, the standard Space Marines are almost a meme as to how many releases they get and how regularly. So many different flavours of Primaris Lieutenants. Though I've got no doubt Games Workshop absolutely will keep them coming, they still have plenty more Firstborn to phase out and Primaris up I suppose. The Black Templars would have redone in style in 9th edition, no surprise there. Tyranids again had their massive release at the start of 10th. Still some things could be interesting, maybe some Shrikes would be quite nice to do at some stage. Necrons were redone big in 9th and got several character releases in 10th. Probably not going to be the next edition until we get anything more, but I really look forward to seeing Destroyers and a Nightbringer redone perhaps. Orcs are down here as well, they got their Beast Snaggers in 9th. And then another fairly good release in 8th edition with the October Buggies. Maybe Tank Busters could be a particularly nice one at some point. And Tau Empire have had their recent crew release, really focusing on their Xenos Auxiliaries. For the most part I think their range holds up okay. Maybe things like the Vespids and Sniper Drones could do with an update at some point or maybe the return of some of the other ethereals. As mentioned, there were a fair few in the middle of these, but jumping up to the top 10, in 10th place and kind of close to each other, you had voted Blood Angels and Space Wolves. In the past, the major divergent chapters have been these guys and the Dark Angels, before the Black Templars and Deathwing were expanded a bit more, slightly more recently. Kind of interestingly, despite their neglect since they basically came out, the Death Watch didn't feature here trailing these other two by a significant number of votes. I feel like these guys are certainly going to be at least somewhere near in the queue though. 
since Primaris were a thing in 8th edition, Games Workshop have been really focusing on getting a whole load of core units out for them over 8th and 9th. In 9th edition we were shown what to expect with a Primaris style update for Space Marine chapters in the Black Templars, and it seems with Dark Angels following along after that, Games Workshop are starting to do releases in earnest for these specific chapters. So far for the Blood Angels we've had Mephiston and Commander Dante reforged, the Space Wolves got Ragnar Blackmane, and both have had a few themed upgrade sprues and lieutenants, but not too much beyond that. I think at this point it's really not too hard to imagine what would be coming for them. For the Blood Angels it feels like Primaris Death Company and Sanguinary Guard would be the biggest wishes. Maybe a fair bit easier to do now they've actually released some standard Primaris Jump Infantry. The Space Wolves maybe have slightly less clear options with a lot of different ways they could go. The Wolfguard Terminators would be a nice choice I think, or even just Wolfguard in Power Armor. It'd be cool to see some sort of primary scale kits to represent Grey Hunters or Blood Claws, perhaps. My guess would perhaps be that things like Thunder Wolves and Wolfen might be left till even later, given that they're maybe a little bit more atypical. And going all in on the Wolf theme, they both have lots of other characters as well. Hopefully, they'd cross the Rubicon Primaris rather than getting retired. It does feel like when these guys get their range update as well, lots of Firstborn units will be kind of at risk. I can't help but think that some of their exact unique vehicles are unlikely to receive some sort of clean port over from Firstborn to Primaris. The Furiosa Dreadnought of the Blood Angels seems kind of eclipsed by the Brutalis now, for example. And given the Gladiator's release, I'm not sure how likely an updated version of a Bar Predator would be. Moving on, and voted in ninth were the Chaos Demons. Admittedly, they have got occasional small releases over the years, generally coming in with a bit more of a few small releases as opposed to any big huge ones. Gradually, Games Workshop have redone all the greater demons from their really old metal forms, and a few others got updated, things like the Flesh Hounds or the Fiends of Slanesh. There's still a faction that need a fair bit of attention though, I think. The HQ lineup has some resin relics in there, a lot of which went recently out of production, things like the Blue Scribes or Epidemius. Plastic releases would be nice of those if they could save them from being removed, otherwise they might just go to Legends. For other things they took out, the Furies of Chaos could be good to return. They had some really quite cool miniatures that would have done really well for them from Warcry just as is if they released them. And otherwise for actual updates, perhaps some of the things that could most use a bit of attention might be the Lion Infantry. I feel like most of the lesser demons are at a point where they could be improved upon. I feel like they could be ones to attract attention. Maybe a Nurgle Chariot to go alongside the other deities options would be nice as well. They're the only one that don't really have a Chariot sort of option in the Codex. Boasted in 8th place are the Gene Stealer Colts, a bit of an interesting and unusual faction in 40k, a new and slightly smaller range of an army, and I'm a bit unsure as to which way Games Workshop want to go with them. Being 40k's Guerrilla Warfare army, it feels like they might not just be trying to farm out all of the more usual 40k army archetypes to them. But I'm sure there's plenty more combinations of mutant freaks and looted mining gear that they could add to the army. I feel like there's a lot of ways that they could take the army. You could get some heavy weapon support mutants perhaps, maybe an actual named character for the faction. Something else drill related like that rock grinder, maybe something like a Hades breaching drill would fit in pretty well. Maybe an enormous super heavy mining rig, though I sort of wonder whether Games Workshop feel the Gene Stealer cult are important enough to attract that kind of attention or maybe try and reinterpret that classic limo that they had from days past. I feel like GW often try and sort of like borrow the tropes of something, but give it a bit of a makeover to interpret things for the more contemporary setting. And maybe a little bit sceptical as to how far Games Workshop are going to release big new waves of kits for Gene Stealer Colts in the near future though. They certainly do have a player base, but they are one of the single most niche factions in Warhammer 40k, and they do have strong competition for all the other things that need releases. Still though, it seems that you guys think that they're one of the factions that should get more sometime soon. Voted in 7th, we have the Grey Knights. Maybe in a not too dissimilar place from the Space Wolves and Blood Angels, a Space Marine army that's likely to get a whole range refresh at some point. It's more a question of when Games Workshop gets round to it. They're mainly a faction just built around three primary plastic kits, all of which did just about release on the side of Games Workshop plastic miniatures when they did start to get quite good and quite flexible. Though as the years have ticked on since then, they are starting to show their age now. Games Workshop's slowly been upscaling the Space Marines so that the standard Power Armor Marines and Terminators are both bigger than the Grey Knights miniatures now. And basically the only miniature in their army at the moment that feels like a really modern miniature is probably Castell and Crow right now. Similar sort of Grey Knight Firstborn-esque aesthetic, but primary scaling, and really quite a nice miniature I think. Along with the other Space Marines, it seems very likely that they'll update the Power Armor Marines and the Terminators to the primary style scale. 
And I feel like the miniatures were released suitably long ago that they could profit from some increased sharpness with the detailing and things. I can't help but think that some Grey Knight Brotherhood Terminators or Paladins could look pretty awesome. If they did choose to give the army a full refresh, I feel like it would be at least a fairly popular move to do a redesign of the Dread Knight in some way. I know lots of people like their Demon Slaying War Mechs, though it's always been one of the miniatures that's received its fair share of criticism since it released. And have been quite a lot of 3D printing sculptors who made their alternative versions of this, all of which looking pretty epic. Otherwise, it might be nice to see a few more actual Grey Knight HQs as opposed to just borrowing the librarians and chaplains and things from Core Codex Space Marines, as well as refreshing their characters as well. Taldor Drago and Brother Captain Stern, both of which could be good choices for plastic releases when they get round to them. They are languishing in fine cast resin at the moment. It seems likely that Games Workshop will get around to doing a Black Star range release for the Grey Knights at some point in the future, but no telling whether it might be in 10th edition or much later down the line. Boasted in 6th were the Golden Boys of the Adeptus Custodes. Kind of interesting that they were the only army in the top 10 that's had its army release in 10th edition so far, but is still voted as needing a release or wanting one. Maybe it's just because what they need is really quite obvious and maybe not too hard to deliver for Games Workshop. They could do with just their 412 range in plastic so you're not just paying twice the price for the same miniature. The Forge World Custodes range is particularly quite well received, really awesome sculpts like the Telemon Dreadnought, the Venatari Custodians I think are cool as well, and the Caladius Grav Tank fills an important role in the army that Custodes just don't really have access to outside of it. Although I really do hope that when Games Workshop do release things, they don't just make things difficult by locking new models just to the Horus Heresy setting only. We had all those very nice Dreadnoughts and things redone for the Space Marines call new Contemptors and Leviathans, and then for Games Workshop to send them all to Legends for Warhammer 40k purposes. Really hope that Games Workshop learn that it's okay to have a few cross-compatible models, and actually choose to incorporate them in Codex Adeptus Custodes, as opposed to languishing in some slightly partially supported Forge World indexes, which means they don't really tend to be front and centre for consideration with army balance and things. Given the state of the new Codex though, that might not be the worst thing in the world for them. Otherwise, could certainly expand the other talent of the Emperor a bit, a few more Sisters of Silence models to make them into more of their own small army, if they do seem to be going for that with formations like the Null Maiden Vigil that partly doesn't work due to the unit roster. I'm not really too sure how far they go with that though, given that they're sort of supposed to be really quite a hyper-specialist force in the lore. Though of course, given recent rules changes, we could have some nice trolling of the community, and Games Workshop just come out with a nice new model for Caladay's Cash. Next up, the Eldari are the only major established faction that got a big release last edition that features on this top 10. The only other ones that got lots of kits last edition that were the completely new armies that people think need more for. I feel like Games Workshop really did deliver in some style for the Space Elves in 9th edition. Their range just had an enormous amount of things that clearly needed updates and they did make a fair headway into them admittedly. Things like Guardians, Storm Guardians, the Avatar of Cain, New Dark Reapers and Morgan Ra some fancy new rangers and an autark, and plenty of others. However, despite all this, plenty more was needed. Games Workshop also gave them these striking scorpions in 10th edition as well, so one more aspect ticked off there. It's now actually looking in the stage where just one big release could get the vast majority of their other stuff up to scratch. Perhaps for the biggest priorities would be the remaining aspect warriors. The warp spiders recently turned 30, I believe. There's also the fire dragons and swooping hawks, which I think are nice enough miniatures, but have had to stand the test of a lot of time. There's the other Phoenix Lords, Fugan, Carandras, Azamun, and Baharoth. Azamun's miniature is supposedly done and seems likely to be coming this edition, maybe with other stuff. And there are also a few more fine cast characters in their range. I believe Prince Iriel and Illic Nightspear. Hopefully they get new plastic miniatures as opposed to just getting axed. I'm not maybe too hopeful on Illic's front there though. To be honest, even if Games Workshop did all of those kits, that would be still quite a big Eldari release for any one edition. I guess beyond that, a few of their other plastics are still kind of old. The Falcon Grav Tank and the Viper Jet Bike in particular have been in long service, but I think in general they hold up nicely enough compared with other more contemporary plastics. I guess for other options for new stuff, maybe some sort of super heavy Grav Tank in plastic could be kind of cool to see. Something similar to the Forge World options if they wanted. They could maybe expand some theming with things like Exodites or Corsairs other units. Perhaps do the Shadow Spectres in plastic if they wanted yet another aspect to go at. But there's plenty of other options out there in the lore. Maybe the Bone Singer from the Dawn of War franchise could be another option. They did have a miniature for them in the past. Hopefully the Eldari get a bit more love either later this edition or in the next one. There's still a faction with a lot of potential for cool new kit updates. First in fourth, so we're really getting into the armies that you think most need updates now. And here we have the Thousand Sons. 
The sorceress legion of Magnus does seem to have been left behind perhaps a little bit compared with some of the other deity legions. They had quite a nice plastic release, maybe about the same sort of time as Grey Knights perhaps. I'd argue really quite cool miniatures for Rubik Marines, Scarab Occult Terminators, Magnus himself, plus some sorcerers. And then since then, not really very much since. I think only the Infernal Master in 9th edition has been their more recent release. And they still feel like an army that's really not very big in scope or range. Maybe newer people who've been collecting the faction long since they got released aren't quite as bothered. But I still feel like these Zangors, Mutalith and the other Zangor units felt kind of low effort for Games Workshop at the time. They were literal direct ports from kits from Age of Sigmar that weren't really particularly intended to be Thousand Sons. Even if they did throw them a bone with some upgrade sprues with some auto pistols and things. I guess Zangors do the job well enough as sort of raised cultist chaff though. Perhaps for ideas about how they could be expanded, Death Guard maybe give us a little bit of a hint of the scope that they could get. They had really quite a lot more support characters, a different Terminator variant, and some vehicles and demon engines. It seems that perhaps top of the wish list for Thousand Sons could be to have some sort of Psyche or Asylum Pattern Contempt to Dreadnought or Hellbrute variant, perhaps. I did quite like the Egyptian styling one that they had for Heresy. For what's supposed to be the core of the army, Rupert Marines, I feel like, could do with a bit more of it in expansion. Perhaps a heavy fire support unit with some big guns for the backfield might not be the worst. Maybe some variants on Hellfire missiles or Soul Reaper cannons en masse. Or I think it could be really quite cool to see a melee version of your standard Rubik Marines on foot. Could still be a sort of frontline battle line type unit. Maybe something like shields and spears could look really cool and fit with their Egyptian-esque theming. Otherwise, it could be really nice to see some zinch style demon engines of one sort or another. I'm genuinely not sure what the best way to go with them would be, but I'm sure there's lots of scope for creativity from the Masters of Change. I could imagine things like maybe a centerpiece sort of chariot pulpit type model for a sorcerer, maybe similar to things like the Blood Throne for the Demons, or some little diorama like the Triumph of St. Catherine for the Sisters. It'd be quite cool to see a sorcerer centerpiece type unit, perhaps. Again, Games Workshop don't really seem to have shown the Thousand Sons much attention since they released, though. I think it really is getting to the point where their lack of any sort of update has become a bit conspicuous. Particularly as after a follow-up release, we might well have armies like World Eaters wind up with more kits than them, as well as being more recent ones. Close in third, and another fairly predictable choice, were the Drukhari. I think it's hard to argue that the Raiders of Komara are one of the factions that most absolutely need attention, and don't just want it to update some kits. Their roster isn't tiny, but it's not enormous either, and a significant chunk of it is just plain out of production. Four fine cast kits in the Grotesques, Court of the Archon, Beastmaster and Urian Rakarth are just not on sale anymore. That number did include the Mandrakes as well, though fortunately Games Workshop redid them for Kill Team. Feels like it'll be pretty awesome to get any and all of those redone in nice plastic form, and say perhaps the Grotesques could be a particularly good one to look at sooner rather than later. Kind of an important unit within the Homunculus roster to have some heavy hitters that can jump out of Raiders, maybe the others just being a little bit more peripheral and supporting. Hopefully at some point they'll actually get around to redoing Azrabel Vect as well on his Dice of Destruction. The Lord of Komara himself is a pretty ever-present feature in the lore, and I feel like any sort of major release for the Drukhari would at least have a reasonable chance of including him, likely riding to battle in a blinged-out raider. As perhaps a slightly more niche faction in Warhammer 40k, I'd find it hard to imagine Drukhari will get too much more than that, but even then that's five plastic kits that they really quite need. And I would argue that the vast majority of the rest of their army does hold up very well for the kit's age, perhaps better than other similarly aged ones. Next up, and voted in second, we have new arrivals on the scene in the World Eaters. I feel like these guys and one other faction are particularly notable in people's minds, given that they got a good release in 9th edition, though it really felt like half a release compared with what they might have later. In 9th edition, World Eaters launched as kind of their own faction, but only really with the bare minimum. Angron, some new berserkers, some jackals, and a juggernaut lord, plus those hulking ape bound. It did kind of seem though with that entire army launch it felt like Games Workshop might have changed plans at some point. Their codex was very different to all the rest in 9th edition, having a much more 10th edition feel with the way that it was set out. And the kits that they got, while cool, really didn't feel like it was the entirety of what Games Workshop had planned for them, with some notable gaps in the line and other things mentioned in either artwork or lore. Perhaps notably amongst them are the Berserker Surgeons, kind of surprising that one of those didn't show up given that they were mentioned really quite a lot in the lore with tending to the 8 bound plus maintaining the Butcher's Nails and things. I'd be more surprised if one of those didn't turn up when the 10th edition codex came out. Another obvious oversight is a Lord on foot which just feels plain weird for a Chaos Space Marine army not to have, we only have the one on the Juggernaut. People were generally expecting some form of Red Butcher's Terminators or another Cornate equivalent. 
They kind of feel like the default thing that they tend to do for Chaos Space Marine armies, given they're iconically the elite in the lore. Plus, both Thousand Sons and Death Guard got their own versions, and no reason that the World Eaters shouldn't at some point. Berserker Juggernaut Cavalry is definitely a possibility. It looked like they appeared in some artwork in the previous codex. Plus, by the 9th edition standards, the fast attack section of the book was notably absent. They only had spawn there, and it feels like something should be thrown in to fill the fast niche for the World Eaters. And finally, if we're daring to dream big, I feel like some Cornate Demon engines would go down really, really well and not be hard to do at all. There's already some good precedent for them with, say, the Blood Slaughterer from Forge World. Something pretty similar to that feels like it could fit right in alongside and provide yet another source of big melee threat goodness. I would say that World Eaters are one of the most likely factions to get a good 10th edition release. Seems like they're pretty guaranteed to have more to come. Finally though, and boasting first, are the Leagues of Botan, along with World Eaters, their 40k's newest standalone faction. And interesting that they did garner a fair few more votes than the World Eaters did, or they might have more unique miniature kits compared with the World Eaters. I guess the World Eaters can admittedly fall back on at least a few generic Chaos Space Marine army picks to have a more expanded roster, even if most of them aren't quite as full of Cornate goodness. Again, for Space Dwarf enjoyers, I'd say the Leagues of Votan got an alright army launch, plenty of battlefield roles covered including bikers, transports, a heavy tank, some melee infantry and more. I think it's fairly clear that there's more to come for them in 10th edition to give them a bit more of a fully launched and well-rounded army. There's just quite a lot of battlefield roles that are missing for them at the moment. Somewhat recently we've had the news that those Hernkin Jaegers will be a thing from the Kill Team box set. That's been nice to give them an infiltrate squad option with Space Dwarves in trench coats. But beyond that it really is a bit of a blank canvas that Games Workshop could really surprise us with. They're a new army without as much established lore, and they could put in some interesting or surprising things if they wanted to. They've already done several Votan reinterpretations of several classic SWAT kits, their Exo armor becoming the Hearth Guard, and their Trikes becoming the Hernkin Pioneers. Otherwise though, perhaps for more obvious options, their Jump Infantry. Feel like there's a unit that's going to happen. They've showcased a Leagues of Votan Jump Pack, so we know that they do have them. This guy from the Kill Team Force. Seems very likely that we'll get a jump pack kit. I'm not sure if it'll just be this weapon option or whether they'll go for something slightly different. Otherwise, I feel like a walker or mech type unit would fit in really well with their styling and the way that they do things. Maybe something not too crazily dissimilar from the Invicta Tactical Warsuit. Otherwise, could back them up with a few more big guns, maybe some indirect fire or artillery of some kind. Or they could go down a bit more of a mining or AI core inspired unit. Maybe digging into their ironkin a little bit more. There really are a lot of options for Games Workshop to go down here, and it'll be interesting to see what they come out with. In any case, it seems that with the Leagues of Votan having basically a small army roster, but otherwise being a new faction that deserves more, they're the ones that you guys voted as the single most deserving of more models in a big way right now. Finally, for some honourable mentions, I did put Emperor's Children in the poll. I was interested to see where they'd place, given that they're basically soft announced right now, given that they've taken the units out of the Chaos Codex, just as they did with World Eaters in 9th. From Games Workshop's language, it sounds like it's probably a late 10th launch for them. Could be the launch faction of 11th, though I feel like that's less likely. Pretty much for certain, we'll get new Demon Primarch Fulgrim, in all his winged snaky goodness similar to the Heresy model, new Noise Marines and new Lucius the Eternal, Two kits that probably should have been updated a long, long time ago. And otherwise you can draw on the other Chaos Space Marine Legions for a bit of inspiration for them. New Terminators again seem likely. Raised Cultists of some sort. Some generic Lords and support characters of some sort. Perhaps Demon Engines, a Possessed Alternative, or Unique Dreadnoughts or Hellbrutes all could be interesting. Some sort of Sonic Dreadnought would be kind of cool. Given that these guys don't actually have an army yet, they ranked highly in the voting. They would have placed third just behind World Eaters. I guess if they are to be a faction, hard to deny that they should get an army release, otherwise they're not really going to be a faction at the moment. They do feel a bit different to the things that are already out there, given that you can't really weigh an army that's not been released versus one that has. Finally, I also asked you guys who is most likely to actually get a release during 10th edition, a follow-up question to the main poll, and this is what you guys came out with. Emperor's Children were first, maybe unsurprisingly given recent news, Leagues of Votan and World Eaters also high just due to common expectation. I'm not really too surprised that people rank Space Marines super high here as well. Games Workshop often tends to keep a few kits for them coming often later than in the edition. We had Shadow Spear in 8th edition and then the Brutalis and Desolation squads in late 9th. Otherwise Blood Angels, Eldari, Drukari, Grey Knights, Space Wolves and then Chaos Space Marines rounding out the top 10. 
Most of the rest of those seem at least pretty plausible, particularly Blood Angels and Space Wolves given the primaris updates they've been doing. Chaos Space Marines ranks 10th, I'm not sure what people are thinking about there given that we know they've got their battle forces coming. Maybe some people were counting that as the release and saying yes we know they're coming. It does just seem they're getting the two Lord kits though so I wouldn't really call that a big release for them. Otherwise, for honourable mentions from the top 10, Admech and Death Watch were the next two that were just behind the ones that I mentioned for the top 10 armies that most need things. A common talking point for the Admech is getting some nice Forge World style automata to back up those Castellan robots. They'd be very cool to see and might give them a few more options for heavy lifting. Death Watch certainly in the same sort of place as the Space Wolves and Blood Angels. A nice new veterans kit plus a couple of characters. Maybe an upgrade sprue as well could go really quite a long way for them. I'm not sure it would have to be the biggest investment on Games Workshop's part. Knights and Chaos Knights were a bit below them. Despite the Imperial Knights getting no actual releases in 9th edition, I guess they have got their Plastic Serastus Knights that are maybe more primarily aimed for the Horus Heresy setting within 10th edition though, and they were really quite exciting. They still feel maybe a little bit peripheral to the faction though, given their rules are locked to Imperial Armour and not within their codexes. In any case though, I'll be interested to hear your guys' thoughts, which are the factions that are most deserving of release waves in Warhammer 40k right now. Look forward to hearing your ideas down in the comments, and what they should get when they get one. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.